computing in a sense we can perform some of the tasks so if i'm performing some of the tasks without fixing anywhere then that will be considered as mobile computing when it has a memory it will store up to 16 to 64 kb of size and it also has a processor so the ability to interact with a user gsm is an acronym for global system for mobile communications everybody welcome back to the session 6 and chapter 15 networking concepts i am rohini ts lecturer department of computer science vidyashram pre university college temple of excellence mysuru in the previous session of this chapter we have learned regarding the switching techniques so in this we have three kinds of switching techniques that is what i have discussed in my previous session so that includes pack, uh, circuit switching packet switching as well as message switching and also we have learned regarding this communication medium so here also it has three kinds one is simplex mode half duplex mode and also we have learned regarding full duplex mode so then we have learned regarding some of the network devices that includes hub repeaters bridge and also we have learned regarding gateway so modulators so everything that i have discussed in the previous session so in our today's session we will be discussing regarding what do you mean by wireless and mobile computing so in this also we are going to have several methodologies or techniques so that is what we will be learning in our today's session we'll see what do you mean by wireless communication so as we all know that uh, we have a sender we have a receiver i wanted to share the data from sender to receiver so in order to have a transmission of a data from sender to receiver which is taking place with the help of a channel or which is taking place with the help of a cable or a wire then we are going to call that as a connection oriented but if i'm sending a data from sender to receiver without any channels or without any cables then that will be considered as what wireless communication so if the communication is taking place without any wires or uh, virtual communication we are going to call that kind of technology as what well, wireless communication so it is a simply a data communication without the use of line line so here we are not using any of the cables in order to transfer the data from sender to receiver so this include how we are going to have this uh, wireless communication that also includes telephone and uh, cellular telephone two way radio fixed wireless even with the help of laser or a satellite communication already we got to know regarding this laser and satellite so in order to establish this wireless or a virtual communication then these are the methods we have in order to have a transmission of data or have a communication over the internet so and also now we got to know what do you mean by wireless communication so now we'll see about this mobile computing so if i say computing then computing in a sense we can perform some of the tasks so if i'm performing some of the tasks without fixing anywhere then that will be considered as mobile computing so a mobile in the sense it can uh, walk around it is not static or it is not fixed so it is not on the ground surface so it can be travel or it can be moved from one place to another place in order to perform all those operations so that mobile computing means that the computing device is not continuously connected to the base or central network so there is no restriction over connection of that particular computing devices to the there is no restriction like the computing device is not always need to be in the base or a fixed or a central network so it can move around that is what we are going to call it as a mobile computing so that mobile devices that include pdas that is personal digital assistants and also we have laptop computers smartphones smart watches everything is com comes under this mobile computing so we are going to use a devices for computation purpose like i'm doing some of the operation i'm performing some of the operation that is not always needs to be connected to the base or a central network so it can move around so that kind of computation will be termed as what mobile computing and examples are laptops smart watch smart phones and also personal digital assistants so this is regarding wireless communication and mobile computing so in that we have gsm so what do you mean by gsm here gsm is an acronym for global system for mobile communications so 
this gsm is abbreviated as global system for mobile communication so in order to have a wireless communication gsm is also used and this gsm standard for digital cell phone was established in europe in the year of mid 1980s or mid 1980 so that means this gsm standards has been established by the europe for the purpose of digital cell phone in the year 19 8 so that means this gsm is also going to use as the narrow band tdma that is tdma is nothing but time division multiple access so you just imagine you have 10 uh, computers or you have 10 workstation and you have only one channel so that needs to be used in order to communicate for example when i'm working or when this gsm uses this narrow band tdma that means narrow band is a technology in that specifically it is using a tdma that is time division multiple access so at that time you just imagine i have a 10 to 12 uh, computer system or a workstation and i have only one channel so at that time how i'm going to give the channel or how i'm going to uh, establish a communication from one computer to another computer uh, in that we are going to use a time slice or we are going to use a time periods or a constraint for example i'm going to give 10 minutes for my first computer user and after 10 minutes uh, got over then i will shift the particular usage or a priority from a first computer to the second computer user so this is what we are maintaining and we are giving a multiple access to different computer or workstation based on the time so that is called gsm it will going to work based on the narrow band tdma the tdma is time division multiple access so we are accessing the content over the internet or we are uh, having this wireless communication which is based on the time slice so a technology for delivering the digital wireless service using time division multiplexing that is what tdm time division multiplexing so this is regarding what gsm so next what we have here we have sim card everybody has sim card right even more than one then what do you mean by sim card what is the abbreviation of sim card that is subscriber identity module so this sim is nothing but subscriber identity module and this is a chip so why we are going to use this chip in order to have a unique phone number so this sim is a computer chip that gives a cellular device its unique phone number so that's what the reason everybody has unique mobile number due to this subscriber identity module so that represents the identity of an user and as we all know that uh, when i insert a sim if i wanted to add any of the contact to my uh, mobile at the time it will going to ask us like whether you wanted to share this number with the uh, sim card or to the device that means what we can understand out of this the sim card is also capable of storing small amount of data so it includes both memory as well as the processor so when it has a memory it will store up to 16 to 64 kb of size and it also has a processor so the ability to interact with a user so that means it has a processor that means what it has a ability in order to perform the computation this is regarding what sim card so and also nowadays we are getting the sim cards even in the standard sim card uh, size and also micro sim as well as nano sim so now we'll see the next topic that is cdma so if you just uh, recall in the older days uh, we had a mobile phone called mts that means what so for that mts mobile i can't insert any other uh, sim card like i have to use only the sim card which is built by that mts company only that is what uh, it has a dedicated slot in the same way the cdma is also going to work so cdma is a short for code division multiple access a digital cellular technology that uses a spread spectrum techniques so which technique it is using it is using spread spectrum techniques you just imagine we have a sender and also we have a receiver i wanted to share the data from sender to receiver so all the messages whatever i wanted to send from sender to receiver so every data and information of a packets will going to be uh, spread or it will going to be sent like a spread 
spectrum. So as we know that when I'm sending some data and messages uh, over internet with the help of this what uh, sender and receiver, it needs to be encrypted. So if it is not encrypted, then there will be a chances of losing the data, then there will be a chances of uh, hacking the confidential data. So that whatever the content we have, whatever the data that I want to send from sender to receiver, everything will be uh, chopped into number of pieces like a package so that will be spread across the network so when it reaches to the receiver that receiver will going to pull all the data as a package and they are just going to reframe it and they are going to do the decryption whatever the content we had uh, as a encrypted data in at the receiver side everything will going to be decrypted then they will they get to know what is the data and information what actually has been sent from this sender this is how this uh, cdma will going to work so that is what code division multiple access so it will going to have a digital cellular technology and that will going to use a spread spectrum techniques so in the cdm as a form of spread spectrum which simply means that data is sent in a small pieces over a number of discrete frequencies available for a use at any time in the specified range so this will be available the content will be available uh, to the receiver at all the time or any time when we are having this cdma that is regarding cdma of wireless technology so next we have wll for example you just imagine you wanted to have a connection or uh, uh, internet connection to your house so at that time how we are going to build a connection whether you are going to have a different connection for your uh, room whether you are going to have a different connection for your kitchen no right instead of that what we are going to do so we are just going to have a connection or a wireless connection to the complete house or a building so that kind of technology will be considered as what wll or wireless in local loop so it means to serve the subscriber at homes or offices it will going to create a dedicated channel that will going to serves the need and uh, requirement of a subscribers those who are present in a home or which they wanted to have these kind of technology for the office or a, for a particular building so that is what uh, reason of having this wll or wireless in local loop and also in wll service the telephone provided is expected to be as good as wired phone so when i'm using this wll at that time so this telephone needs to be good enough in order to carry the quality voice so you can see here wll system serves a local area by deploying the multiplicity of multi channel transmit that are within the line of sight of the intended customer so as i told it will works like a line of sight it will going to have a dedicated channel from all the parts or it will going to be established within a home or within a building or for a particular location so and also it is important to have a quality telephone service so its voice quality must be high a subscriber carrying out a long conversation must not be irritated with the quality so that when i'm having this wll at that time the quality needs to be high so if they are having a conversation over a number of hours and all at the time the quality should not be decreased so it is necessary to have a voice quality or it is necessary to maintain the quality of an voice so if i'm using this wll like uh, we can use speakers phones or uh, cordless phones or parallel phones so this is the uh, usage of having this wll or wireless in local loop so next what we have that is important gprs so we are all living in the digital world and we are all fond of uh, using this internet then what is the use of having this gprs what is the abbreviation all these abbreviation you have to remember it is important for one mark question so that gprs stands for general packet radio service then what is the reason of having this gprs here so we are all going to use this gprs in order to have a wireless communication using mobile device then what are the advantages or services that i can get if i am using this gprs so we can access the internet and we can send the emails and we can send large amount of data we can download games and we can play with that and we can also watch movies so all the data whichever is present in the satellite everything will going to be communicated and that will going to reach the receiver back with the help of this satellite communication also this is regarding what gprs 
so here you can see that how the communication is establishing so with the help of this we can get these many benefits i hope you all understood it's all about today's session let me meet you in the next session until that keep learning keep on growing thank you